You see, Japanese art is quite realistic, taken directly from the nature. Even the Japanese Buddhists worked under the dictum, draw what you see. So how the hell did the tigers end up in Japanese art, even though they are not native to Japan at all? In this episode number 8, we are visiting the Nija Castle, which means that you have already visited 13 out of 17 World Heritage Sites in Kyoto in Japan. So, uh, the Nija Castle is one of the most known and famous castles because of its historical importance. Uh, the main reason why it is so important is because it really represents the power that Shogun had over the Emperor in the Edo period here in Japan. So now let's take our relaxing walk around the Nijo castle and discover the story and history about tigers as well, well as this castle and maybe say our goodbyes to the 2022 because it was the year of tigers. You probably heard many times but do you know actually what a Shogun is? So the Shogun is, uh, or was, a very ancient court appointment which was dating back to the 8th century and it was roughly equivalent to a generalissimo or a commander-in-chief. The appointment was originally temporary, lasting for the duration of the military campaigns, but in 12th century it became a permanent position. As always, gardens of the Kyoto heritage sites are a true treasure. So, what are you looking at now is the Ninomaru Garden, which is a classic Shoinzukuri style garden, just like the one in the silver pavilion that we saw in the episode number two, with a large Hiraijima island flanked by the Crane Island and Turtle Island, both metaphors for longevity. At the entrance, there is the Karamon Gate. A bit similar in style to the gate we saw in the last episode number 7 of Hoganji in central Kyoto. Again, on the gate we have symbols of longevity, such as like the brilliantly colored carvings of crane, pines, bamboo and plum blossoms. But what I found the most interesting is actually behind these doors. The first thing that we can notice is the Ninomaru Goten Palace and here the story about tigers begins. First and the largest section that you can see when you enter the palace are actually the waiting rooms and those waiting rooms are called Toranoma, which means the room of the tiger. So those tigers were painted along with the bamboo trees and there is actually a specific strategical reason why they put the bamboo trees. As you know, in Asia, or especially in China, the emergence of the wind actually represents the emergence, emergence of the god in Asia. Okay, so now we understand why they draw the bamboo forest, but why did they draw the tigers? Because geographically looking at it, the closest tigers can be found in the Siberian woods or maybe in the northeast China as well as Korea, but in Japan there are no like natural tigers. Mm. But uh, there were actually a few tigers that were given as uh, gifts to the uh, warlords uh, and they like transported them to Japan like a full-grown kittens. <laughs> uh, even before that, like far back in the history, you know that uh, the always drawings of the tigers could be found on the Japanese scrolls and scripts. In free-flowing Taoism, the Chinese philosophy that grew actually from studying nature, universe is seen as symbiotic yin and yang. Uh, yang represents the active and masculine and takes the form of a mythological dragon. On the other side, yin is passive and feminine and takes the form in the tiger, which was common to the Chinese forest. The pairing of a tiger and the dragon was also considered like a well-balanced. Those two are actually counterparts. The tigers are from the real world and dragons are from the imaginary. Japanese tigers tend to have like different facial expressions and suggestions of temperaments, while on the other side in Chinese paintings they look like very realistic and even aggressive. In the Zen Buddhist imagination, the tiger grooms itself like a in a really monkish discipline and the, when a tiger is uh, napping on the sunlight it is like a true uh, representation of enlightenment in, in Zen Buddhism because uh, the Japanese Zen Buddhism has connections to the Chinese Taoism they naturally started implementing tigers in their own art but painting something that they have never ever seen before in their real life 
for Japanese artists was a true struggle and the, the results were oftentimes quite ridiculous. What happened was actually that a really funny phenomenon was created in the Japanese art called the flat head tigers. So my question is, did somebody took a pot and hit the tigers? <laughs> no tigers were harmed in the making of this video. The visual outlook of tigers being ridiculous is not the only confusion that Japanese artists have about tigers. So here are three more things that I find really funny. Fearless tigers as a symbol of power. So going back to Nijo Castle and Nino Maru Goten Palace, the first thing that the visitor to the palace saw was those visitor rooms and the paintings of the like, fearless tigers. But actually those paintings were designed to express the authority of Tokugawa Shogun, which here actually ended up really nicely. But in some palace with tigers looking like this, I'm not really sure that they succeeded. Family of spots and stripes. Many artists like to think that leopards are actually the female tigers and the regular like tigers with stripes are males, creating a family of spots and stripes. So I think it's such a funny misbelief. Number three, so apparently Japan is like the land of cherries and the warm rising sun as well as the cute little tigers. Closer look, it appears some artists used house cats as models for tigers. Take Maruyama Okuyo's Sitting Tiger, for example, which was painted in 1777. Like his ink tiger glares with green almond eyes and uh, like silted pupils uh, as an ocular feature, which is actually common to house cats on a sunny day, but not really the aggressive wild tigers. I got the same feeling seeing the tigers painted in the Tenryuji Temple in Kyoto. Seeing those playful tigers on the wall is something that actually reminds me of like a childhood and like playing with cats. It's so interesting to see because um, many people consider Japanese art as something that will never go away, especially like the Japanese inking and how professionally it is and how beautiful and uh, kind of not really realistic in the sense of the like Western art, but realistic in the minimalistic lines that are just like represented in such a powerful way. But uh, I guess you can agree that most of the tigers in Japanese art uh, looked well a bit, you know, questionable. But uh, I will give you three more paintings of the tigers that I find really amusing. And please let me know in the comments which one do you think uh, is the best or like is it your favorite? The number one fighter with the tigers, <laughs> not the real one, but the painted one is the Kano Tsunenobu who represented a wide-eyed tiger with a, a sinuous body peeking through some bamboo stems. The head could more fittingly belong to actually a jaguar, but the rest of the body does bear the typical stripes of a tiger. Number two, so Ganku, he was a man who actually did a serious, serious study on tigers, which enabled him to paint the most realistic tiger that anybody before him in Japanese history actually did. In fact, he is still known as like the greatest tiger painter in Japan and like art history. However, it had limitations. So actually Ganku faced the problems with portraying the eyes of the tigers because those eyes are closer to what ones like the house cats have, not really the regular tigers. Tikudo he saw a real tiger for the first time when a circus visited Kyoto from a foreign country. Oh my god, he was so shocked. Like, real tigers looked a lot different from what he known from the past master's paintings. He became so obsessed with painting tigers, like the real tigers he saw at that moment, that even Mansour says that he actually became almost mentally like ill because he started having like serious hallucinations of tigers from his own paintings that he was working on. So I will give you one more painting as a bonus and it is of course the Hokusai. So Hokusai managed to paint the beautiful free spirit tiger with the title of uh, old tiger enjoying the snow and uh, it can be even seen as like a self-portrait. So let's wrap up with the feeling of freedom and beauty. So 
It is so important to keep in mind that uh, tigers are actually a beautiful wild animals who, as all the animals of this planet, deserve to be free and to live a happy life. So with that being said, uh, we should really pay our respects to tigers and uh, we should not do any harm to them in any kind of way. Especially because some subspecies of tigers for the last like three years and more have been struggling with the extinction. So I dedicate this video to tigers and uh, in a hope that uh, we will be able to save them. So I'm paying my respects to the tigers and also to you for watching this video. Thank you so much. See you in the episode number nine.